April the 29th was the 65th day of the heroic confrontation of Ukrainians against the Russian occupiers. On this day, during the meeting with the Polish journalists, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, said that another mass grave of civilians killed by the Russian occupiers had been found in the Kyiv region. It is still unknown how many people died there. As of now, 1,187 bodies of Ukrainians killed by the occupiers have been found in Kyiv region. Fierce battles are going on day and night for Donbass, Donetsk and Luhansk regions. It is here that the enemy is trying to reach the administrative borders of the regions and take them under control. In the Donetsk region, the occupiers used banned phosphorus shells again. The village of Solovyovo was attacked with this weapon. On April the 29th in the Donetsk region, the occupiers killed two civilians and four people were wounded. Due to constant shelling, the Russian military destroyed almost all communications in the city of Luhansk region. More than 100,000 people had been left without water until the end of the war. In fact, the town of Severodonetsk is on the verge of survival. The enemy also fired on Severodonetsk hospital. Nevertheless, part of the medical institution continues to work and help wounded Ukrainian military men. At the same time, in the occupied territories of Ukraine are recognized Donetsk and Luhansk People Republic. Local authorities are forcing young people to donate blood for the wounded occupiers, said the Verkhovna Rada Commissioner of the Human Rights, Ludmila Denisova. The occupying authorities in the temporarily occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk regions are forcing students of higher educational institutions to donate blood en masse for the wounded occupiers. It became known about 700 cases of forced blood donation. According to the Pentagon, more than 1,900 missiles were fired at Ukraine during this war. Currently, most strikes are hitting Donbass region and the city of Mariupol. In Mariupol, the occupiers forced people who could not flee from the city to live according to the rules of the so-called Russian world. Mariupol Deputy Mayor Petro Andrushenko said that leaflets explaining Nazi orders have been distributed to locals. Filtration, or as it is called by the occupiers, verification, it's obligatory for everyone, not only for those who leave Mariupol, but it is strictly forbidden to go even to Donetsk without filtration. Total control, a real ghetto. In addition, the occupiers are in fact stealing the citizenship of Ukrainian children. The first birth certificate has been issued in occupied Mariupol since the beginning of the full-scale war, but the document stated the Russian citizenship of the newborn child, although the baby was born in Mariupol, Ukraine. The occupiers also informed they were not going to rebuild the destroyed homes of those who stayed in the city, and they continued taking the looted property out of Mariupol. Mariupol city Council reported that even the pulmonary ventilations were taken out of the city to Russia. The city has been under Russian military control since March the 1st. More than 100,000 civilians remain there today. The occupiers do not stop firing at Mariupol. As a result of constant attacks, there are 600 wounded people in the field hospital in the shelter of the Azovstal plant, the mayor of Mariupol, Vadim Boychenko, reported. The occupiers do not allow them to be evacuated to Ukraine. The city, which was one of the most developed in the region, was just a Russian constabler under the ruins. On April the 29th, the Kyiv rescuers continued to dismantle debris left from the missile strike at a high-rise building in the center of the capital. Unfortunately, the body of a journalist and producer, Vira Hirich, was found among a pile of shattered concrete. The woman worked in the Kyiv bureau of Radio Svoboda. She is one of those who has been telling the world the truth about Russia's war against Ukraine. Caliber missile strikes occurred in the 
the evening of April the 28th. Four floors of a residential building were destroyed. At least 10 people were injured and four were hospitalized. The armed forces of Ukraine intercepted another conversation of the occupier. This time Ivan Klemenko, a soldier of the elite motorized division, was telling his mother that the task of the Russian military man was to kill all Ukrainians, both civilians and soldiers. Всех надо убивать, всю Украину надо вытравить просто, до самого Львова, чтобы этой страны вообще не было на карте. Because of the war, dolphins are dying massively in the Black Sea. A large number of missiles used by the Russian military to fire on the territory of Ukraine are launched from ships and submarines, said the Verkhovna Rada Commissioner for Human Rights Lyudmila Denisova. The use of military sonar is especially dangerous for dolphins. As a result of the radiation of navigation devices, animals cease to receive echoes which leads to their death. Such shelling threatens all living things in the Black Sea. Despite the war and hardship, Ukrainians remain human. 79-year-old Maria wrapped her dog's head in a kerchief so it is not afraid of shelling. This photo of Maria and Bonia spread all over social networks. With the beginning of the war, the village of Horenka in Kyiv region came under fire from the occupiers. Mrs. Maria was offered to evacuate, but she did not leave the dog and hid with Bonya from the occupiers in the basement. Now Mrs. Maria and Bonya are safe. They are already thinking of how to repair the damaged house and plant a garden. Where can you find a safe place if your city is under siege? Is it an usual residential building? No. In hospitals or schools? No. In a theater, the heart of your city. Far away from any military objects. Yes, that's a good idea. Is there any other way we could warn Russian pilots about kids hiding in the theater? Yes, capital letters, in Russian. That way we will definitely be safe. But only if murdering our children isn't their goal.